Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pixel Tunes Radio. I'm Mike. I'm Ed. And today we are doing racing games. My heart is racing just thinking about this. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this one. Today we also have a special guest. So our buddy Scott is joining us and he has actually picked five of the tracks that you're going to be listening to. So Scott, why don't you say hello to everybody? Hello everybody. How's it going? Happy to be here. Yeah, we're really glad to have you on the show. Ed and I split the tracks. So Scott gets five tracks and then we picked the remainder of the tracks. So we'll kind of talk a little bit about each of the tracks that we picked. If this is your first time listening, well, go back and listen to the first eight episodes <laughs> because you're way behind. <laughs> so we're going to start off with Top Gear, which was actually one of Scott's picks. So Scott, you have some some racing in your family blood, right? Oh yeah, yeah. My dad was in the, in the back in the '60s with the modifieds. I actually, say my great uncle was. My dad was in the '70s, so and I've kind of been a race fan of all sorts since then. Uh, you know, F1, NASCAR. And it's about four wheels on it, really. Nice. Cool. So shopping carts? Yes, shopping yeah. carts. <laughs> <laughs> he actually has, you know, Mario Kart track in his backyard. Yeah, with we shopping throw, carts. They throw blue shells at each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've gotten tossed out of Walmart a couple times. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this track is called Las Vegas. So I'm unfamiliar with this game. When when does this uh, song play? Like, what? Le- I'm, I would imagine the Las Vegas level. Yeah. So what's your experience with this level? Um, uh, well... Growing up, I was a Genesis man, but my buddy had a Super Nintendo, and we this was probably one of the most played games we'd do in a while. Definitely loved it. Uh, Top Gear was a great game. I remember it was split screen regardless of whether you had one player playing or two players, which was kind of interesting. Mm. My brother and I would play it all the time, which was cool, but then when we wanted to play a one player game, you yeah. still only had half the screen to play with. And that they fixed that for Top Gear 2, but this was strange for some reason. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. Mario Kart was the first game that I ever saw split screen on. I mean, split screen was unheard of back in the day. I mean, two screens going on at once. I yeah. Mean, so it's really funny that most of these games have split screen action because most of them are, you know, in fact, I think all of them are of that era where it wasn't online play for the mm. most part. Maybe one or two of them are. But with split screen, it was always funny because I would get lost playing a racing game because I would always end up watching the other person scream. Mm-hmm. And, yep. and so I wasn't trying to cheat or anything, but I would be like, what's that guy doing? Like, where is he going? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, too. With the one-player mode with this game, you would see the computer player on the top, like, just kind of driving along. And yeah. like, I wonder how the computer drives. And before you know it, you're, like, <laughs> flying off the road, crashing into the tunnels and stuff. Yeah, and we got worse in time because you got more screens out. Three screens, four screens out. <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. At least nowadays when you have larger widescreen TVs, you have a little more real estate to play with. So in a, in a four-player mode, if you get approximately the size of a screen that you'd have back in the day when you were only playing on a 16-inch television. So, But this game is, is pretty cool. It's it's basically like a Rad Racer clone, oh. for the most part, behind, okay. the, behind the car, except it did introduce tunnels. Mm-hmm. So you'd actually go into tunnels and you'd see lights on the ceiling as you go through them. And it had a little bit more of a 3D effect than Ridge Racer did, but, um, you know, due to the capabilities of the SNES, but it really didn't have too much more than than Rad Racer really offered mm. in terms of except for that head to head play, which was actually a lot of fun. Rad Racer was made by Square, wasn't it? Yeah, that's so weird to me because I mean you always think of them as an RPG company. Yeah, so no, it's to hear that they made a. And Nobu Uematsu actually composed the he music. He did for really. Rad Racer. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I picture like these sweeping, like symphonic melodies, like playing while you're driving. They're actually feels... very American-inspired kind of fifties oh, and sixties rock tunes. Oh, okay. Rad Racer. So the music was composed by Barry Leach or Leitch. I think it's Leitch. I think it's Leitch. We'll go with Leitch. Yeah, I don't think you'd want to be known as Barry Leach. <laughs> so Barry Leitch has a long and storied history. He started composing on the Commodore sixty four when he was only sixteen years old. Wow. And then he later moved on to obviously do some Super Nintendo games. He did uh, Rush and Rush 2049 on the N64, which had really good soundtracks. Yeah. Really enjoyed them. And the Dreamcast, too. So Lotus, too. He did the soundtrack for Lotus Turbo Challenge. Yep. And that had a great soundtrack. Yeah, it did. Very techno. Yeah. He was really good at electronic dance music, which is definitely what you're going to hear coming up on the Super Nintendo Top Gear. Right now. Las Vegas. Let's go.
Welcome back, boys and girls. That was Power Drift. That was Power Drift. Mm -mm -mm. That's good stuff. So that song is called Like the Wind. Yeah, it was a Sega arcade game, which was later released on the Saturn, but only in Japan. Mm -hmm. And for that release, they remastered the music. And, or they arranged it. And it was it was good. It was really good, but I don't think it compares to the chiptune version hmm. of the song. Scott, you're pretty familiar with the game, right? I have a vague recollection. I played it a couple times. Yeah, it's kind of like a Rad Racer on steroids. I, I guess a lot of these early games you can pretty much compare to Rad Racer. Your Rad Racer on steroids. Your mom's Rad Racer on steroids. Nice. Ooh, boy. Nice. Sick burn. Anyways, <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite racing game soundtracks. When... But Mike knocked on my door at midnight one night and said, we're doing a racing game podcast. And then stumbled back out into the night. I, uh, I said, I gotta do Power Drift. So wait, why, why was I... First off, I never showed up at your house at midnight. And second, why why did I have the voice of like a 60-year-old man who smoked too much? You must have been really drunk. Yeah, apparently. You don't even remember it. I, I, I don't know. I was asleep. The doorbell was ringing. <laughs> I opened it up, you were there with <laughs> totally naked except for a tie. <laughs> so I was and you Donkey told me Kong. about this podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you pounded your your fists into the yeah, dirt yeah. as you walked out to your car. It's like, I got an idea. And drove out backwards. We're doing all <laughs> racing games. <laughs> and I drove away in my Mario Kart. We're going to get Scott to do it too. <laughs> what did I walk into here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Hiroshi Kawaguchi composed this song. He is more popular for doing uh, the Space Harrier, Outrun, and Afterburner series. Mm. Mostly because those games came out on home consoles and everybody played them and knew them. So Power Drift was a lesser known title, at least in the US. Yeah. That, that soundtrack is just phenomenal. Every single song just kind of has its own mood to it, and, and I feel like it could really be used as popular music instead of just video game music. I've never heard this song before when we played it. I actually. I really, I'm really digging it. It's a good, it's a really good track. Most of the songs that we'll be playing, I haven't heard of because I'm not that big of a racing game fan, as most people know. Anything with a cart in it, I'm pretty much game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but most racing games, really, I'm kind of like, meh. I like the arcade racers, stuff like Extra. Remember Extra? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a cool game, which features a lot of music, which I was actually gonna pick from, but we can't play that music because it's all like licensed yep. music. Yeah, unfortunately. So the next track is Outrun 2019 for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. We had already featured a song from this game yes, on the Soundalikes episode. Yeah, but this one doesn't sound like anything. It sounds like nothing ever before. <laughs> So, this song's called Feel the Beat. Scott, tell us why you felt the beat. Oh, this one was a oddity I picked up back in probably 1994. I picked it, it was a random pickup from a video store, but it was a very good game. I mean, the music stuck with me since, you know, even then. It's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun track. This always hung on to me all these years. I've heard some of the other songs for other, other Outrun games. Outrun games, I mean, for the most part, they have fantastic music, really good stuff. I, I think the only Outrun game I own, I think I might own it in 2019, actually, but I haven't actually sat down and played it, because I bought it recently, and I'm building my game room as we speak. It's, I still don't quite understand if it's supposed to be like a spin-off or a pseudo-sequel, but it's not really lined up with anything. I think it's just Outrun that takes place in 2019. Probably. That makes sense. I don't know. But I want the car. Yeah. And, yeah. And, like five years from now, yeah. I want the car that's in this game. So that car looks really 80s, though. Yeah, but it's got like a jet propulsion it's, unit on the back. Yeah. It's a rounded off Batmobile. Basically. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Cut the wings off and yeah. get powered. <laughs> and this this game, you know, again, it's like Rad Racer. I'm going to be saying that for almost every game that took place before the PlayStation era. But the graphics were pretty cool. You had like bridges that would go over the track. It gave it kind of a real 3D feel. And then you could go over jumps and kind of like take a kind of like slightly an alternate route. They so had like branching paths. Yeah. Like an F-Zero sort of thing. Yeah, more or yeah. less, but yeah. more more like Rad Racer than F Zero. Hmm. A couple oddities in there, there are jumps there too. You got to go over these land masses. It's like they kind of tossed that in there, kind of quick, but yeah, it was yeah. kind of unique for the for the time because you really didn't have tracks that broke up like that and around that time. There are no safety barriers in the bridge, so if you go off, you're pretty much done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was composed by Shigeki Sako. Yeah, Shigeki Sako did very little. And we actually don't really have a lot of information on him or her. I believe it's a her. 
because I found most there's like a ton of album covers with a woman on them that she's done like soundtracks for, but I can't tell. So when she comes knocking on your door at midnight, yeah, you nothing but a tie, yeah, you're gonna yeah. be in trouble. Yeah, yeah. So just be like, oh, <laughs> you screwed up. <laughs> the stuff that she did, other than Outrun 2019, did post for Garnet Moon slash Prayer. Legend of Game Music Consumer Box, Nico Nico Duga Selection, A Waste <laughs> of Talent. I mean, some of this stuff is... You said Consumer Box. I did. I did say Consumer Box. He's making this up. Most notably, though, at least in the video game world, she composed a soundtrack to Vi, or mm. Vey, however you want to pronounce it, yes. for the Sega CD, which was a, a really excellent soundtrack for uh, for an RPG for the Sega CD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that's really all the info we have. But what little work there is, so it's impressive. So feel this beat with Feel the Beat from OutRun 2019. You feel that beat.
closer to the match. Introducing the all-new video game console, the Sony PlayStation. Featuring over-the-top graphics with full-motion video, CD-quality sound that'll blow your speakers away, and finally, the games. Featuring titles like Battle Arena Toshinden, Rayman, Street Fighter the Movie the Game, Ridge Racer, and... Ridge Racer! Excuse me. I'm trying to record a commercial here. Oh, sorry. The other competition can't touch Sony. They're here to stay, and there are plenty more titles on the... Red Racer! Hey, would you knock it off? I can't, man. What? Why not? My wife left me. My kids hate me. I mean... How would you like to be married to someone like me? I'm the rich racer guy. It's all I have. I got nowhere else to go. Uh, look, 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 man. Man, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Look, why don't you join me? For old time's sake. You got it. Featuring the most intense racing experience you've ever felt. Rich racer! You got it! Remember kids, voice actors with one shtick are people too. This was paid for by people like me, the Jammy Fund, and Christmas Seals. Donate today and help support One Trick Voice over artists. They need our help. Hello, thank you for returning. That was Rage Racer. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to do an episode where it's just that. Where it's just like me <laughs> talking robots? in a monotone voice like, thank you for joining us. That was a song. Here was another song. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. <laughs> Let me Google that for you. Well, you know, it's kind of a kind of a big difference coming from an animated song like like Mathema Beat from Rage Racer. Yeah. Talk about a dancey track. Pretty dancey. Pretty dancey. Pretty dancey. I mean, Rage Racer music has always been one of my favorite games to listen to outside of video games. Music is what pretty much got me into techno and electronic music to begin with. So I remember when I was in Vegas once. Speaking of Vegas, we had a track called Las Vegas. Isn't that a coincidence? That is not that big of a coincidence. No. All right. Anyway, we're supposed to talk about Vegas. So. You're like this. This song was called Fruit, and one time I ate a banana. <laughs> True story. Okay. Well, anyway, this is the one thing I can talk about <laughs> Vegas that can come out of Vegas. Okay. Come out of Vegas. Come out of Vegas. <laughs> There's a lot of things that come out of Vegas. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to talk about. <laughs> anyway, so I was staying. It was my first trip to Vegas. I was probably in my early 20s, and we were staying at the Excalibur. And in the arcade there, they had a Ridge Racer setup, the arcade game. But you actually got to sit inside a Miata. Ooh. And so the gas on the brakes worked the actual gas and brakes. That's really and neat. And the game was projected in front of the car. Oh, that's like, cool. like a huge 80 inch yeah. you know, projection Custom screen. Cabin. Well, it was, just, it was a car that was modified for, for arcade controls. That's really neat. Yeah, and the um, the engine sound was underneath the hood. So you, oh, would, wow. you could hear the car, yeah. but then the music would come out of the car's the speakers. speakers. Oh, so it really felt like a driving experience. Fantastic, yeah. And uh, I was a huge Ridge Racer fan before that because I bought the game when it launched. You know, when the PlayStation launched. Mm -hmm. But then playing this was like, oh my god. There's like nothing compared to that oh, experience. No. no, that's really so. cool. That's like as close to virtual reality as you could really get. Pretty I mean, much. You're playing this game in an arcade cabinet that looks like a car. And the audio, like, that's just yeah. phenomenal. That's I really I, cool. I actually won the race, too. So oh, that's I'm pretty cool. happy with myself. Rage Racer was the third game in the series, I believe. There was Ridge Racer, Ridge Racer Revolution... And then Rage Racer came out. Rage Racer, I think, was the first one that was really designed specifically for 
the PlayStation and it mm -hmm. had a lot more differences in the tracks and you can upgrade to different cars as you went through the game and had kind of like a storyline built into it. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of a lot of good times with that game. It was composed by Tetsu Kazu Nakanishi and Hiroshi Okobu did the sound direction. And those two guys kind of marked the beginning of the new Namco sound team. They later went on to do Ridge Racer um, Type 4, Ace Combat 2, and a lot of the other games. And the music took on kind of a little more of a, I think, a polished quality to it rather than just a raw techno sound that mm. you know, like Ridge Racer and Ridge Racer Revolution had with, with Shinji Hoso and all them. I don't know. Now, I, I've been trying to put this moment off for as long as I can, but we're, we're going to have to play it, so <laughs> let's go away by for Daytona USA. So, you guys. Yeah, that that's the track we're, we're playing next. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Ed, Ed hates this song with a fiery passion. But this is Scott's pick, so tell us why you picked it. Daytona's are, are iconic, so I mean, what can you say? Does that theme song, you know what it is right off the bat. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, going back to what Ed was talking about, the uh, systems for arcade games being built in cars, they yeah. actually did that with a lot of show cars for stock cars. Did they really? Cars huh. They would actually build a show car and uh, make it so you could sit in it and play. That's really cool. Da Daytona or Ridge Racer? Daytona was up. Nice. But That's they would do that with stock cars. Because I remember, you know, the Daytona games having those huge, like, eight-player um, oh, yeah. cabinets. Yeah. They have those at fun like, spot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you I can all race together. Do they? Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I have to pay. I gotta double check that, but I thought. Yeah, there are Those were always a lot of fun. Like Mario Kart GP, the arcade yeah. version of Mario Kart, you used to be able to, like, see your, your photo, your, your face I, on the screen while you were racing those. each other. I did one of those, yeah. There's actually a photo of me floating around with, I, I made, like, a really super angry Mario face. <laughs> I saw that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I posted it on Facebook yeah. and on my Twitter page. It's pretty funny. That's hilarious. Like, we'll, yeah. have to, we'll have to uh, tweet that out yeah. for, for the podcast. Yeah, definitely. But I think what really sold the game was the multiplayer in the arcades, because it was this, you know, all balls out, this drive, and... Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that bothers me about the uh, Daytona song yeah. is, is the vocals. I just think it's the second most annoying vocal track I've ever heard in video games. Okay. What's the first? I want to take for a ride. Oh, yeah. come on. Come on, where's Capcom 2? Come on. Come on, man. But I will say it's... We can't be friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> but as cheesy as it was, though, it, it was kind of relaxing with the music because, you know, it was kind of enjoyable. Because all these racing games are, like, you know, frantic music sometimes. So yeah. It kind of messes you up, but with, like, Daytona... Like, and the most uh, advanced course is like the most laid back music, so you, it kind of relaxes you as you're driving, mm. trying to pay attention. Like that, so, mm. kind of yeah. has the focus. I respectfully disagree. I, I like having energy music and. For, uh, for me personally. Fair enough. I gotta say, I would probably find the Supersonic Racing song even more annoying. That one annoys the crap out of me. The, the, the Super Sonic <laughs> Racing. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that is yeah, just still, awful. I don't know. Uh, this Daytona song, I can. Uh, that's not that bad. You gotta, you gotta have like, a strong love for Euro pop for that one. Yeah, maybe yeah, it's because that's, that's what it is. It's yeah. definitely. It's very Euro pop. Maybe yeah. because I hear the song so much, though. Yeah, the Daytona song. Probably yeah, just because it, it starts up as soon as you turn the game on. Well, I need so. to stop sneaking in at night at midnight and putting headphones on to <laughs> play the song. Yeah, that's why you hate it. Wakes so up in a cold sweat. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have the Daytona dream again now. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not your wife, your mom. <laughs> yes. You call your mom on the phone. <laughs> mom, I'm in a dream. All I can think of now is, do you ever watch these videos where the guy is singing it live? That it's just that now. That image. It's like him hanging over it. Yeah, 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 yeah. In your dreams. It's like, like that scene from Back to the Future where he like comes yeah. in and starts playing death metal. Like, uh, <laughs> Marty McFly. Or, uh, <laughs> this track was composed by Takanobu Mitsuyoshi, and he did a lot of really cool stuff. He composed music for Virtua Fighter 2 and Shenmue. So, as we were saying earlier, he filmed video of him singing the song for songs for Daytona. And it's like all over YouTube. I mean, you can go, you can check it out. It's, it's pretty funny. Since then, he's actually gone on to be a part of a lot of first things. Meaning, like, he was the first to do or, you know, part of something that was the first thing that happened. Just the first to annoy the heck out of me with his song? Yeah, 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 exactly. So he was the first to be a part of a symphonic game music concert in Leipzig, 
Germany. For you Germany listeners out there, all, I don't know, zero of you, I apologize if I totally butchered that name. But uh, th this took place in 2003, and it was the first time that a concert featuring video game music was held outside of Japan, which is really cool. Mm. Also, he attended the world premiere of uh, Symphony, which I haven't been to, but I know exists. Uh, it's called Play. And it's a video game symphony. They had it in Rosemont, Illinois, as one of their stops for this tour in May 2006. And the music from Shenmue was performed there, and the event drew uh, almost 4,000 people, which wow. is really impressive for video game music. Not only that, but he was also... He worked with Chris Holzbeck, who we played on the show before, during the Symphonic Shades Holzbeck in Concert. Uh, back in 2008, and this he worked on an arrangement with uh, a game from something that Chris had done. Uh, this game called, and I've never heard of this game, uh, Apidia? Apidia. Apidia? It's a horizontally know. scrolling shoot em up. There we go. Uh, yeah, so, you. Uh, Apidia. 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 So, the event was performed at the WDR Radio Orchestra in Cologne, Germany. And again, I apologize if I butchered that. That's Cologne or... It's Cologne. It is Cologne, yeah. Not right. Well, there you go. And it marked the first live radio broadcast of a video game music concert. So, a lot of really cool stuff in the video game music world. Yeah, and he's a pretty he's animated of... guy, too. Yeah. You know, he's got stuff on YouTube where he's dancing around and singing. Daytona Talk HD trailer him. alone. Yeah, <laughs> that's what the music does to you. So, you know. It's infectious for those who enjoy it, I guess. Yeah, so... You know, just not Ed. Just not Ed. So, you know, <laughs> we're all going to dance, and Ed's going to go sit in the <laughs> I'm going to go away. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go away. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the track.
Welcome back. Howdy. That was 4x4 Off-Road Racing on our debut Commodore 64 console. Yeah. Yeah, it's the first C64 game music we've ever played. That's true. You're welcome. Yeah, this so, is a Scott pick. Yeah, tell us why you picked it. Pure nostalgia. Yeah, nostalgia. Back in the 80s, I was big on the Commodore 64. That was, I know it's a, it's a computer, but that was basically a console for me. So that was a go-to thing for me. Yeah, yeah there were thousands of Commodore 64 titles out there, and a lot of them had extremely good music. What I really like about the, not just the composers, but also the people who made Commodore 64 games, is a lot of them were also players. So they were like fans or gamers, just like everybody. And they were just like, this is really cool, I want to figure out how to make these games. And then they would make them on the Commodore 64. Yeah. Basically borderline homebrew. Yeah. 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 No, and a lot of them went on to make music and games for much bigger consoles yeah. later on. That's true. The cool thing about the C64, and especially a title like this, this is really the only piece of music that's in the game. And a lot of composers just kind of had free reign to make their own title music when the game started up. Mm. And sometimes there would be incidental music during gameplay, but they usually just have a static screen and just dedicated all the computing power to awesome songs. And if there's like, you know, a glacier of C64 dopeness, out there, <laughs> this song is just like kind of touching the glacier with a toothpick. That's right. how much of a dent this makes. You know, you could probably play a Commodore 64 song, an awesome C64 song, from now until the day you die, and they still have music left to play at your funeral. Um, after you die from playing too many <laughs> awesome C64 songs. <laughs> So the song was composed by Janelle Jaquez, who was at the time known as Paul Jaquez. So um, she had done a lot of work on various different systems, even on games like Donkey Kong, like the version of Donkey Kong. She was the project leader design and graphics conversion for that game. Also did work on titles like Omega Race, and later on, uh, down the road, uh, more advanced stuff like Quake 2, Quake 3 Arena, and Quake 3 Team Arena. And so, composing-wise, I believe that 4x4 off-road racing may be the only thing that she's done. Possibly. I can't really find anything else. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't really really been able to find much. Have you actually played this game, Scott? Oh yeah, I had it when I uh, owned a computer at the time. I had a hell of a lot of Epic's games back in the day. What's, what's the gameplay like? Is it like Rad Racer? <laughs> yes! <laughs> no, basically it's simplistic. You're, okay, you can say it's Rad Racer. Everything's Rad Racer. <laughs> yeah, basically you can upgrade your truck as you go. You race basically against the clock, if I remember. Because it's been a while, unfortunately. That system's long gone for me. Yeah. I just say computer. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you basically beat the clock, if I remember. And you can just upgrade parts with beefier tires, suspension, truck cabs, for whatever reason, for... Just for looks. Hmm. Lights. Cool. Would add weight to it though. You could probably consider a truck cabin downgrade. So you can like convert like all the stuff, like you know, tires and wheels. Yeah, bigger tires. Yeah, that's or... cool. Cool. Yeah, I didn't have a C64 growing up, but my mom, who is a recently retired teacher, she had Commodore 64s in her school, in her classroom. Mm -hmm. So during the summers, when I used to go into school with her to, so she would set up before the school year started. I basically just sit and, and play on all these mm -hmm. Commodore 64 discs that, that my cousin had given her to, to play in the classroom. So mm -hmm. I kind of remember playing a lot of the old electronic arts games, and I had a lot of fun with them. But I tried to get one when they were dumping them, when they were getting new computers in. Yeah. My mom actually tried to get one for us, but they had already gotten rid of them, so oh. I was kind of disappointed. Oh, oh well. In retrospect, it's all, it's all simplistic, but they had some good stuff there. I remember fond memories of Jumpman, no relation to Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Ducks Ahoy, which uh, came on a cartridge format. So oh. there was a couple cartridge games for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Monster Movie Game was great, hmm. which had a license for Godzilla. So, speaking of games where you can convert and change wheels and stuff like that, we're going to go to one of my only picks for this racing episode, and that's going to be Rockman Battle and Chase. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Mike picks a Mega Man game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this game I hadn't played up until the Mega Man X collection, which actually featured this game. 
on it. It was a bonus thing that you had to unlock. So I remember getting the X collection and be like, really dude, I gotta play through all the X, these X games just to unlock this mm -hmm. or whatever. Rockman Battle and Chase also features that same type of gameplay. Um, it's kind of adapted to the Mega Man universe where you can, you know, when you're playing through the one player arcade mode, you beat a character or beat a boss or whatever and you can get the power up for the car. How Mega Man. Yeah, and then you would take that and you could like, so you could get like Shadow Man's Blade, for example, and like throw that on your like spoiler or whatever on the back. Nice. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Are they cumulative? Can you have like dozens of weapons on your vehicle at the same time? You can, like you can have like Gutsman tires and <laughs> like, you know, uh, roll, you know, things. Or so it ends up looking like that big thing from the Willy Wonka movie. Yeah. Oh, the cars look ridiculous. They don't... And I think that's part of the reason why it never came out in America, just because it was such a weird game for it being... It, it just was very... It's like they took Mega... It's like they took Mario Kart and they were just like... Got it. They were like, we gotta come out with a game. You got your Mega Based Man and Mario Kart. Kart. Yeah, they were like, we gotta come out with a game that is going to take advantage of all these crazy car racers that have been coming out over the years. And, I mean, every company had done one at that point. So, I think when Capcom jumped at that opportunity, they were they didn't really have the, the research to figure out how would be the best way to come out with this game and market it to various different locations and regions. Mm. So they were kind of just like, let's just throw stuff at the wall and let's make it stick <laughs> and see what works. And they did, but it was very, like, all over the place. That's cool. I didn't even know about this title existing until you chose the song, so I'm going to have to take this up and yeah. give it a whirl. No, it's pretty wacky. It's fun for, like, ten minutes, and then you're like, where's Mario Kart? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's it's amazing <laughs> how many kart games came out around this time. There was yeah. Chocobo Racing. Yeah. And, like, Mario Kart just kind of exploded that yeah. genre. Mario Kart was the first, and then there was Chocobo Racing. Um, Crash Bash. Crash Bash. Crash Team Racing. Crash Team Racing. Crash had a lot of kart racing games, actually. Yeah. I mean, Square only did that, you know, Squaresoft did Chocobo Racing, that was it, but, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, <laughs> Konami had the, uh, Konami, basically YY uh, Racer, that's yep. crazy cars, yeah, that was a good game. I almost picked the Crash Team Racer song. Yeah? It was cool because Mark Mothersbaugh worked on that. Oh, title. really? And, uh, you know, you might remember him from Devo, and everybody seems to remember him from the Rugrats thing. Yeah, the cartoon. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know why. I, I never really watched the cartoon. Yeah. But, but I really like it. I don't have the fun memories of that so. Yeah. So, this song is called Over the Top. And it's pretty over the top. It is really over the top. I was telling Ed earlier, I was like, this song makes me want to get up and do stuff. I don't yeah. know what. You did the truffle shuffle. Just, just yeah, get yeah. <laughs> Just get up. You don't have to do anything else. Yeah. Just get up. Stand. I, I, wave I, your arms around. Yeah. I, I Mikey, wave the inflatable arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I want you to do is I want you to listen to this song and picture me just wiggling my arms in the air. Just like, Aah! you know. Yeah. Or if you have a dirty floor, listen to the song and sweep or yeah, <laughs> do stuff. I yeah. don't know. No. I don't know. It just makes you want to do stuff. Do stuff. So the track was composed by Yoshinori Ono, and you may recognize that name from Street Fighter 4. He was the producer on Street Fighter 4. This is really his only audio credit for actually like writing or composing a song. He probably came up with this one in the shower. He was probably like, dee, 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 dee. Dude, and he was like, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> so he has done a lot of stuff for Capcom. He worked on uh, Onimusha series, he's worked on obviously Street Fighter 4 and all the other Street Fighter incarnations. He's trying to get Darkstalkers off the ground for a remake of Darkstalkers or a new version of Darkstalkers. That'd be great. That would be awesome. That would be Darker so Stalkers. Great. Darker <laughs> Stalkers, yeah. Stalking Darker. Nightier Night Warriors. <laughs> Naughtier, nightier night warriors. Yeah, but <laughs> naughty night warriors have definitely been done already. Well, yeah. yeah true. Based in figure form. Yeah, yeah, true. In comic form. So he, this is his only credit aside from also doing a uh, vocal track for Roll, Mega Man, you know, his sister, Roll. So that's pretty much it. So this is the track. So go do stuff.
Aw oh, man, first the coffee shop was out of donuts, and now I'm in a traffic jam. The boss is gonna kill me if I'm late again. Hello there. Yeah! Ryu Hayabusa! What the hell? How long have you been back there? The whole time. You should really look in your rearview mirror more. My mom once told me, never look back. I don't think that's what she meant. Anyways, it seems like you're having some traffic trouble. Look at this mess! All I see is brake lights and middle fingers sticking out windows. Hey! Up yours too, buddy! You should try my latest product. The Spy Hunter Armament Pack. The Spy Hunter Armament Pack? That's right! Our selection of incredibly useful, hood-mounted weapons are guaranteed to get you to work on time, every morning, or no money back. Motorcyclist causing you a headache? Give our chain guns a whirl. 18-wheeler doing 30 in the fast lane? The diesel-seeking rockets will send that overgrown behemoth packing. Why don't you give it a try? Well, that guy did flip me several birds, cut me off, and is now blasting Kenny G with the windows down. Okay, I'll do it. Wow, that worked like a charm. From now on, the Spy Hunter Armament Pack is the only way to travel. <laughs> Ew, bird poop, gross. You know how I feel about birds. The Spy Hunter Armament Pack. Available at Strip Boys, Auto Bro, and your creepy uncle's tag sale. I am here to welcome you back. I am here to talk about Super Spy Hunter. <laughs> and I'm here to nod. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So thank you for joining us again. That last track was Super Spy Hunter. Super Spy Hunter, that was the stage two and six theme. And, you know, it's a Sunsoft game. That bass. That Sunsoft bass. Composed by Naoki Kodaka, Nobuyo Kihara, and Shinichi Seiya. That Sunsoft team. That Sunsoft team, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so you'll notice a lot of similarities, obviously, to Fester's Quest mm -hmm. and Blaster Master and a lot of the different games they worked on. Although... The funny thing is, I didn't realize until very recently that that song was a takeoff on the Peter Gunn theme. Yeah. From, yeah. from Peter Gunn and, and obviously in yeah. the original Spy Hunter game. It was pretty clear that that was... Yeah, you know, I never picked up on it for some mm. stupid reason. And then I was just listening to it a couple days ago and I'm like, I freaking know that melody! And it was like that total facepalm kind of thing. Like, oh boy. How could I have listened to this game for 20 years? So anyways, but the bass line is amazing. Mm. I'm sure everybody out there is really bass. That sounds up bass. Yeah. Sounds up bass. Yeah, you can't go against it. No. No. And the game was fun too, so... I hope everybody enjoyed it. Yeah. I did. That was a good song. Yay! Yay! People like me. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously those composers have done pretty much everything Sun Song, so we really don't need to go any further with that. So, you know what? Just listen to all the other eight episodes, and I think we've played a Sun Soft game in every single episode. Just about, except for yeah. the Beyond Chip Tune stuff. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. So the next song we're going to get into is Mario Kart 64. And it's Which was a sequel to Mario Kart 63. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the 64th entry in the Mario Kart series. <laughs> Personally, I thought 24 was the best. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to eventually get, like, it'll be like the year, like, 2059 or something like that, and they'll come out with Mario Kart 64, 64. Or yeah, something. it'll like, have to be Super Mario Kart Super 64. Well, what will they call it? Because it's like they're up to Mario Kart 8 already. Yeah, so. but I mean, they come out with new Mario Karts every like what four years, five years, so like one per launch. Yeah, like one per system. Right? Yeah, like one per Genesis. Been generating yeah, one, one per one per Genesis. One per Sega Genesis. <laughs> yeah, one per generation. Uh, so it'll probably be our great 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 grandchildren yeah. that'll eventually be playing Mario Kart 64. 64, 64. 64. <laughs> so Mario Kart 64 2 is what they would call it. <laughs> this track is pretty iconic. I mean, you can't really talk about Mario Kart without talking about Rainbow Road. And not just the music track, the, the track itself. I mean, 
I remember having so many great times on Rainbow Road. It's yeah. A lot of fun. Rainbow Road is kind of reviled, I think, on the internet. Just yeah. Hate it. Yeah, I don't really it, know because why. it's difficult, I guess? I, I don't know. I mean, it's the longest track. Yeah. It's not yeah. a difficult track. Yeah, but it can be cheap at times. You know, if you're in the, the wrong game place... Can be cheap. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about the track itself. Sure. You know, you can always get hit by enemies and stuff at the last minute and yeah. fall from, you know, last place out of first, mm-hmm. but... The Wii think, version is a bit confusing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think some of the some of the tracks, if you're going the wrong speed over the wrong jump at the wrong angle, you're just... Mm. You're easily flying off the track. Yeah. So... I used to jump off the, the like the very first part when you're like going down the hill and that big hill, and I'd be like, screw it, and I would just jump off the hill and and like try not to touch the analog stick at all, <laughs> because if I touch the analog stick, I would like go start veering left, and I'd be like, no, no. especially yeah. if you have one of those old controllers that would like go left, yeah, right yeah, and not even automatically, yeah. yeah, you gotta like recenter it by uh, what was it like L R and start or something like that to recenter the joystick or anything. Oh, you know, I yeah. never used that. Oh, really? Sure. Yeah, no, if you if you hold L and R and then hit start on the... Re- recalibrates? It recalibrates the controller. That's in any yeah. game or just in Mario? That's, I think, in any game. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have to try that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah, because if you ever boot up a game and you're holding the analog yeah. stick, it'll be like... Yeah, exactly. It'll be like in one left. In one yeah. Yeah. Um, but this, hey, harkening back to Top Gear, this is one of the first games where you could actually do a four-player split screen. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was madness. And, you know, lots of good times we had. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, just this was an old. This, this was the beginning of the party game for Nintendo. Mm. You know what I mean? Mario Kart and Smash Brothers. Yeah, were the party games, and then Mario Party and Golden Eye. You know that yeah. whole era of N sixty four multiplayer stuff. Yeah, I remember when I was in college, the N sixty four was pretty new. It was about halfway through its its life, and I think every dorm room had. And N64, yeah. and, and people would just pass controllers around and play Mario Kart and GoldenEye yeah. until they passed out. Uh, I would say I had a different experience because it was it was uh, high school for me. Hmm. So I mean, we were Scott and I went to high school together. We were in high school when the 64 was kind of going through. I mean, eighth grade it launched for me. Hmm. So I remember reading Nintendo Power, being like, I have to own this system. Yeah. But then at the time, I had picked PC over. My parents were like, you can get an N64, you can get a PC, what do you want? And I was like, <laughs> well, I want a PC! So I got a PC. Yeah, it was the right choice. Oh yeah, definitely. Because at the time, uh, there weren't a lot of games out for the N64, so I was like, I'll eventually get that. And I picked it up for uh, Zelda. When Zelda came oh, okay. out, of course. Makes sense. Yeah. But the rest of the games, like, I remember going to play Mario, like Mario 64, and being, like, hooked and going to Toys R Us every single day and playing Mario 64 when the N64, before it launched. And then when it launched, I was kind of like, whatever. I was still getting issues in Nintendo Power, but I was, there was just no games for it, really, at the time. It's really funny, because the the age difference between us, because I was actually working at Toys R Us when the N64 came out. Oh, really? So okay. I got it at launch. Yeah. And I got that, and then Mario 64. And then you and collected then, so it was dust. Like, yeah, right? exactly. We yeah. played through it, and we're like, okay, let's just wait on good games to come out. Yeah. And we got GoldenEye and stuff like that, but it was never, between my brother and I, it was never really our favorite yeah. console at all. I compared this generation right now that we're going through, uh, as far as Nintendo consoles are, with the N64. It's the N64 yeah. the Yeah, no, it really is. I mean, there were no games that were coming out, and then all of a sudden, the 64 got this flood of games, and there was so much good stuff on the 64. Yeah. Um, but even so, you still had to wait. And when titles like Mario Kart 64 came out, that was one of those times when you would buy a game, and you would just play it for years. It wasn't like, you know, nowadays, where you buy a game, and, you know, the all these kids now have, like, ADD. So they're like, <laughs> beat a game, and then they're like, okay, what's the next on game? On to the next one. Yeah, on to the next one. Like, why isn't this game... Like, we were patient. We were... I, I think growing up in that era, you were more of a patient gamer because you knew that there wasn't going to be a new game coming out for, like, four months. Yeah. And you were like, that's fine, whatever. Like, the new big title. That's why I think a lot of Nintendo pay, uh, fans are more patient, and they're more like, all right, so i got to wait three years for a new Metroid game. Okay. Uh, more like six years. Um, and some of them are willing to do that. Yeah. yeah. And the ones who hopped on to the Nintendo generation when the Wii came out yeah. aren't used to that. No, that's so true. That is they true. They freak out. Yeah. They're like, where's all the games? Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate. So Kenta Nagata was the composer for this one, correct? Yes. Yeah. He's done a lot of stuff. He actually has done a lot of Mario Kart stuff. He did 
uh, Mario Kart 64, Mario Kart Double Dash, and Mario Kart 7. He also did the soundtrack for Zelda Wind Waker and Mario Artist Talent Studio, which... Oh, that's my favorite that's, game of all time. Yeah. That, no, I've never actually played it. <laughs> I think that's the uh, 64 DD game, if I recall. Yes, I believe yeah. you are correct. Yeah, yeah. And then he did New Super Mario Bros. 2. And uh, 1080 Snowboarding. Yeah. Which was, that was some good music. Oh, an amazing sound. Yeah, yeah. And it sounded nothing like any of his other stuff, because no. all of his other Nintendo stuff is very light and airy and, yeah. and playful, and 1080 was like, yeah. almost like prodigy techno kind sure. of stuff. Yeah. I look back on that era, um, and I remember, like, Scott, you and I would be in, like, study hall together and be, like, flipping through EGM yeah. and be, like, talking about, you know, the Dreamcast versus the N64. Yeah. And you, of course, were a huge Sega fan, and I was not at all a Sega fan at that time. So I was like, nope, Nintendo can do no wrong. And you were like, no, man, Sega's going to take over. It was, it was a good time. I don't believe I ever went that far with it. Yeah, we were definitely on this definitely side. Yeah, but compare the Dreamcast to the N64. What do you mean? It was it was awesome. VC had a lot of good. No, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's He's like taking I, your side. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. No. Well, I'm just not an N64 um, fan. No. So. Yeah, I can understand that. I wasn't myself, but the games I played for it, I appreciated. Like, um, yeah, the guy I played the NES with there, my buddy there, at the time. Um, that's all we did there. We yeah. played N64 to like Kingdom Come. Like, yeah, we did yeah. Pilot Wings. Mario Kart. I would say that the N64, I just had a more rich experience with it. I mean, and Mario Kart 64 is definitely a prime example of that, and the music is great. So, without further ado, let's hit Rainbow Road. Yeah, let's do it. It's where you go. Poop.
It's the point of no return. That was the name of that song. It's yeah. Flag to flag. Yeah. Flag to flag. So flag that was Scott's flag. pick. Yeah. Tell me about why you picked that song. Just great driving music, man. Is I can just play the game there and not do anything. Just let it roll. Just play it out. That's true. You can throw that in your car and drive mm. around a lot. Go like 95 miles an yeah. hour. 150 miles. Or standing miles. still. Yeah. <laughs> no slowdown. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how many cars are on the highway, the frame rate never drops. <laughs> <laughs> the graphics are terrible, though. <laughs> Depends on what area of the country you're in. Yeah. But it does have a very 80s distinct sound, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I think this goes back to like an old conversation we had. Like Japan's like 10 years ahead of us in technology, but 10 years behind us in musical trends oh, or something like totally that. Oh, totally true. <laughs> right now they're going yeah. through their techno era. Like, remember, Soon they'll be doing emo bands. Like, remember when Sonic Adventure came out, the theme song was all like 80s metal? It's like, yeah. Is this 1988? Yeah. No, it's sure. 1998. Yeah. And before then they were doing like, you know, disco, electro tracks. Mm. I'm waiting for the revival on electro music, man. That was that was the best. It was the best. I miss it. Yeah. All right. Post dubstep. Post dubstep. Post, post dubstep post, electro. Post dubstep electro. Yeah. Bring electro back. Yeah. Back then, when you could actually hear rappers and what they were talking about, and it was actually like fun. Like rap music was fun back then. Now it's all like bitches and hoes and sipping on drank. I don't know. I can't you know better than me, dude. I don't listen to that. Hey, man, Lord listen. Lord. I listen to rap, I, ironically, <laughs> if, if anything. Post-rap. No, there's some really good <laughs> rap music, in all honesty. But It's like anything else. You have to find it. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's out there. Yeah. Like Mega Ram. He's good. Mega Ram is awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I've seen him in concert. He's good. You've seen everybody in concert. I saw your mom in concert. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Twice. <laughs> Once with a hat on. This guy who composed this track, we couldn't find much information on him. His name was... What? Was. <laughs> I think he's dead. Well, uh, you know, I mean, you know, he, he didn't die, but he certainly dropped off the planet when it comes to composing stuff. His name is Akihito Okawa, and he composed... For Mr. Mosquito. Mr. Mosquito! <laughs> Which we were talking about the game earlier. It's basically a way to... Oogle women. Oggle? Oogle? Oggle. Oggle. Oogle. Uh, oogle. I, I like oogling women. Oogle. I don't... It's a way to muggle women. Uh, oogle women. <laughs> Sent you to sum up as O oh, Japan. Yes, yeah, basically. Exactly. Yeah. O oh, you. Yeah. Card, that should have just been on the back. Just O oh, Japan. <laughs> Warning. <laughs> this game is Japan. Yeah, yeah. And a starburst. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I actually owned that game. It was too ridiculous. I owned it too. Like, yeah. Well, there was EGM was going kind of crazy over it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, EGM rated it really high. Mm. Uh, a lot of people rated it really high, actually. I mean, it was definitely a unique, different game. And I think that's why. Yeah. Because all that stuff, um, even like Katamari, all that unique mm -hmm. stuff coming out of Japan was getting rated really high here true. because games were just getting really stale in America at yeah. that point. Yeah, that's true. It was kind of taking a page from the 90s where bizarre concepts would, you know, work. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, creativity was really high back then because you could do you could do so much with the technology now, but nobody ever really does. I mean, aside from wacky games like Bayonetta, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time you saw a game that was really wacky and trippy and, I mean, Katamari, you know, those type of things. But, like, you can just do so much with the in-game graphics nowadays and people are just like... Shooters. Yeah. That's yeah. what makes money, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, a lot of the unique concepts that are coming out are all from the indie devs. Yeah. yeah. They don't have the budget. Yeah. You know, they have they have the technology or the processing power, but they don't have the budget to put, you True. know, several dozen people on a, on an in-game creation engine. So True. we get True. pixelated 8-bit graphics, which is a nice throwback, but at the same time, sometimes I'd like to see modern graphics with yeah. cool conceptual gameplay yeah. elements. It seems yeah. to be like a crutch. Oh, retro, you know? I mean, I love retro. retro. That's it what the seems... chip's doing in here. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, the retro stuff is cool, though. No, 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 don't get me wrong. Um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's... But there's... it's done right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, it's... games like Shovel Knight, uh, yeah. that, that's going to be huge when that comes out, I think. I mean, I know I donated money to the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. so... But there's always going to be something new and something fresh, and, you know, getting back to the whole racing thing, I mean, we've got Mario Kart... What, eight coming out eight? now? Yeah, and that game looks really fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, phenomenal. And I'm looking forward to that 90s arcade racer. Uh, that yeah, looks, that's oh, yeah. right. Oh, yeah. That looks in the vein of Sega, which 
basically Sega now has dropped off. Yeah, yeah, and it's, well, it's going to have different cars that have different gameplay styles from Ridge Racer, Daytona. Yeah. Um, Sega Scud Racer, Scud Racer yeah. yeah, yeah, and the Indy 500 game, yeah. So. Yeah, so you'll be able to kind of choose whichever driving style you're more familiar yeah. with and race against other people that are racing yeah. so with their like familiar the, driving styles, which is really, yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'd like to race, like, my Ridge Racer cars against your Daytona cars and figure <laughs> yeah. out, like... So you, you have know. your, like, it looked like a GT prototype, uh, Indy car slash maybe F1 car and a stock car. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we're going to yeah. have some fun with that one. And it's, yeah. like I said, it goes back to Sega's Blue Sky theme. It's, like, it's bright colors, it's mm -hmm. trippy stuff there. All I gotta say is, I've been joking for months, but that is Scott the Game. That is totally yes, Scott agreed. the Game, yeah. So, but it, I think... It, it kind of makes it feel sad, though. It's, it's... I'm a big Sega fan, and yeah. Sega has been really... Not Sega since the merger, but well, I see yeah. this game, and it's like, holy crap, that's yeah. what I want. Yeah. It's not a Sega game. <laughs> yeah, it's... That's that's the sad part. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, man. That's so, a, now we gotta have Scott buy a Wii U, so we could all have Wii U's. And, oh, I will down the line. Yeah, so. we could all play arcade, 90s arcade racer. If you say Wii U three times, you're an ambulance. Wii U, Wii U, Wii U. Wii U. <laughs> I did it twice. Oh, so. boy. <laughs> all right. That's going to do it for us this week. Next show, two weeks from now, will be all mine. Whoa. Ed's picks. Yeah. So be sure to look out for our Twitter accounts at twitter.com slash pixeltunesradio. This episode's hashtag will be hashtag racing tracks with an X. The next because it's more 90s. It's, it's extreme. extreme. It's extreme. Well, just because I figure hashtag racing tracks, you might have other hashtag True. stuff that goes along with actual racing. So, And if you're bored with the Twitter, facebook.com forward slash pixel tunes radio and Instagram, we have a account. It's pixel tunes radio. It's not that hard to memorize. And if you want to have video with your musical tracks, and you don't just want to download it on iTunes, which you can also do, youtube.com forward slash dongold, which is my YouTube channel. You can check out a plethora of images with your musical selections for this racing track. We love interacting with you guys, so please send us some comments. Let us know what you think about the show. You can feel free to ask us any questions you want, suggest tracks for future episodes, suggest themes for future episodes. Yeah. We're willing to listen, and uh, you never know, you might find your ideas coming to life on Pixel Tunes Radio. Yeah. We even hope that uh, we get a lot of comments. Maybe we'll do like a uh, user based comment episode where, you know, we have songs from all of our users. And Absolutely. And Absolutely. Absolutely. We also really like pizza. Yeah, so if you want to shove a piece of pizza in the CD-ROM drive, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> we have high, high bandwidth connections yeah. here, so that pepperoni will definitely come through. We'll download at uh, 25 kilo cheese bits per second. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you just lost the I lost there. it. Wow. <laughs> so, Scott, thanks for joining us and picking some tracks. No, thanks for having me. It was fun. We will definitely revisit Scott's tracks and listen to his stuff in a future episode. We'll have him pick 10 tracks all Daytona just to make Ed suffer. <laughs> ten, 10 episodes of Maybe I'll be Daytona. sick that episode. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, stay tuned and thank you very much for listening. Peace out. Puppies and kittens.